What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be the spoiler free review. As spoiler free as I can help it for Andy Muschietti's The Flash, which is releasing in theaters this week, I believe. Directed by Andy Muschietti. It's written by Christina Hodson. Stars Ezra Miller, Sasha Cali, Michael Shannon, Ron Livingston, Maribel Verdu, Kiersey Clemens, and Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck and some other surprises that of course I'm not going to get into. Now the story revolves around Barry Allen aka The Flash who travels back in time to prevent, to prevent his mother's death which traps him in an alternate reality without metahumans. Barry enlists the help of his younger self and older Batman and the Kryptonian castaway Supergirl in order to save this world from the restored General Zod and return to his universe. Now I rarely say this, but The Flash, I would say, deserves the title of overhyped after the visual mess I just had to endure. I don't say that with any sort of pleasure either, because I wanted to love this movie, and at the end of the day, I'd say it does enough to just simply be adequate at best. Andy Muschietti's direction is able to deliver a film that can maintain your attention thanks to the amount of humor and heart that's present on your screen and throughout the story, and that's, of course, what carries it. That's honestly what kept me invested. However, The Flash really squanders crucial aspects of its screenplay. Zod, for starters, who Michael Shannon is just completely phoning it in at this point when it comes to reprising this character. He seems so uninterested that I just was like, I wasn't really concerned or caring of anything that had to do with Zod. It also didn't help that Zod is really an underthought. He, I think Michael Shannon actually even came out expressing that this film didn't feel right or something to that degree recently. But Zod, for the time he's on screen, again, feels like a complete afterthought, along with Supergirl, who is completely underutilized and not on screen enough to invest in anything that's presented about that character. Having no villain is perhaps the film's biggest crime for me. Zod is such a waste of a return, waste of a threat, and so underutilized that any potential opportunity to be a threat is virtually hard to be sold on because of how insignificant the character is made to be in this current uh, context, in the presentation. It's mostly Barry going on this very over the top journey to realize that you can't save everyone. And the villain, I guess, are the consequences of his inability to move on from the past. But this feels underwhelming for a superhero film. Uh, maybe the th uh, the other theme is, is about the fact that we are our own worst enemy, maybe. <laughs> Ezra Miller, America's Most Hated, does a wonderful job as Barry, AKA The Flash, and the character's development throughout the film's runtime managed to managed to resonate with me thanks to Miller's acting chops. Now, despite that, I just couldn't help but think while I was watching this, would this be as effective to me if Miller wasn't here? And I've decided that the answer is no. I've seen this kind of story over and over again, and I just wasn't that impressed, but it was still executed well enough. I don't see myself revisiting at any point in time in the near future, but I still came out of it saying, okay, I like this. Michael Keaton's return is satisfying, but the nostalgia wears off rather quickly. The story has a lot to say about letting go of the past, accepting your present, and now that I say it out loud, it is very ironic that this whole film is basically the example of why you shouldn't F with your canon events, and yes, that's a Spider-Verse reference. Again, visually, it's kind of all over the place. One sequence involving babies was completely cringe to me, and the third act, while entertaining, is filled with even more questionable visuals. It's just a very iffy film that I mostly liked, but I can't overlook the massive nosedives and the things that just did not sit right with me in terms of how it was executed and those problems within the screenplay. The cameos are fun, the score is great, the dialogue is pretty hit or miss along with the pacing as well. Every performance, I would say, is either great, decent, or phoned in, but that phoned in bit that's mostly reserved for Michael Shannon. Miller is genuinely the heart and does that and does that well as Barry in this movie. He or they are rather carrying the material in a way that kind of kept it afloat for me. Moments where the film should pull at your heartstrings fell flat for me, specific deaths being the major moments I'm referring to. The action sequences are another highlight, but at this point I'm just fishing for positives because while I enjoyed it, I thought it was entertaining. There's there's things along the way throughout the journey that are mostly evident within the screenplay that I think are going to be considered problematic for a lot of people. I also do think that a lot of people will find a hard time finding Ezra Miller's character to be someone they can get behind if you can't separate Miller's recent allegations from what's happening on your screen. 
I can see people having an issue there with that. But you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on the social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. I would give this a 6.5 out of 10. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.